morning everybody go go to the post office with me got a couple of errands to run and then we'll get back to the shop I got lots of stuff to do let's see had a good fun off day yesterday yesterday was the first day I didn't go to the shop at all in months maybe years didn't even open the door so we had a good time we had a nice little outing there'll be a video on that in a few days and had a good time with mama my daughter-in-law my daughter son-in-law my grandson and y'all see more about that later on thought we'd drive a little bit and they junk all over the roads and a truck passed me a while ago I mean was absolute flying through the intersection down there one where have so many bad wrecks jumped up a rock you can't see it but give me another windshield chip at the shop now let's do a little restoration all right quick before we move on to our other work this one is uh due to be out of here now this is an antique meat cleaver smart universal l f and c now let me look at my notes that means landers frary and clark uh, cutlery company now they made meat cleavers any kind of kitchen knife you want all different styles of cleavers and here is one of them right here now it was from a company ran from 1865 to 1965 but i just read and this one is uh, the best information they made this particular model here for years the best information I can get, this is probably from the 1930s. Now, this is a family heirloom for some folks. And, uh, it seemed, like I said, it's in good shape. Now, let me show you something that will show you the age of it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera with these holes. These holes here, they're not drilled with a drill. They are punched. And probably even in the 1930s, they had a hydraulic type 
metal punch. They still have them today. Still use them today. And the hole up here, see how it's perfectly round? That wasn't drilled either. That was punched. See the back side there? That's where the slug came out when they punched it. Now, no need in fooling with that. It's fine just like it is. These holes are too. Now, let's look at one more thing. I hope the camera will pick it up. On the blade. See that distinctive line right there? Between the edge and the rest of it? That is a classic edge quench. Which means this part is very, very hard down here. This is hardened steel. And this is soft. Uh, soft being... Not soft, but, you know, not flexible soft, but... So when you chop with it, bones and stuff like that, it's uh, the whole thing is not uh, not hardened, so it's not likely to to uh, break. Now, this has been soaking in evapor rust for about three days, I think it was. It wasn't. It was in good shape up to here, and it was really, really rusty under the handle. So uh, that's in really good shape. Now these marks back here on the spine, very, very common with cleavers, especially old ones. It's been hit with a hammer or a piece of pipe or something. Uh, maybe to chop through a bone. Because back, back in those days, almost 90% of the people butchered their own animals for their own meat. And they used whatever they had to do to get, you know, chopped through the bones. Now, these marks here I'm going to leave in the top, because that is character marks. That is uh, this, uh, this lady's grandfather, or her father or grandfather, belonged to them. He put those marks in there, one of them did, and so we're going to leave them. Now, on the edges here where it's rolled over, I'm going to take those off, flatten them back out, and I'm going to do that with a hand file. I don't trust putting this on the grinder, because I'm not going to take all this patina off. That is years and years and years of beautiful patina. But I will, when it's to get it done, I'll put it on the um, the buffer and polish it. It's very smooth. It's not pitted, really. Almost none at all, except down here on the handle, which doesn't matter anyway. Along the edge, we've got a few chips. There's a few. It's still very, very sharp. So now we'll put this on the grinder with a very, very fine. I hit the wrong button on the camera. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Anyway, with a very, very fine belt, and I'll take these little chips out. They're not bad. It's barely, barely there. And then put a new edge on it. I don't want to change the geometry of this edge. And there's plenty of meat there where I can do that very easily. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this edge so I don't cut myself. And then we'll put it in the vise and file these edges flat. And then we'll move on to putting the handle on. Now this is the old handle. She wanted a new handle. I'm quite sure this is walnut. That was a very, very popular material back then. This one split when I took it off. But it had a crack in it. So I will just duplicate those with some walnut. And pins, I bought cutlery pins for it because they came with the push pins. But after looking at it, uh, those push pins, the old style that they used to use on these were fine. They would hold forever, but one of them was missing. Another one was loose. And I just, I don't like those things unless I've just got to use them. So I'm gonna go back with solid brass pins. I have the pin stock already. Uh, just like I do on my regular knives. I think it'll look much better. And there's absolutely no reason why this can't be put back to use for another hundred years. Once we get done with it. So, okay, enough talking about it. Let's get a... Just like that. Let's get going. And I will... Yeah, I'm going to send these back to you also. Be just for a keepsake. I might even glue that back together, so stays in one piece all righty let's get going
Now see what I mean about this part being softer than the edge? I wouldn't be able to file like that down here because it's hardened. Trying not to scratch it down here. Better put another piece of tape on there. All right, but that's all it is. Just keep on going until I get it down. Then I'll take some uh, fine grit sandpaper and smooth it all out. Now, I don't know why I said that was walnut. That ain't walnut. That's walnut. Duh. Y'all don't pay me no attention. I just work here. <laughs> All right, let's return to our cleaver. <coughs> Pardon me, our cleaver restoration. I'm telling you what, it has been a Monday around here. All right, I'm cutting the pins. Now these are 532nd brass pins. Handle is epoxyed on, uh, still in the rough stage. But before I go to grinding, sanding, taking it to the router, I want to get the pins in there, get them set, peened over, so uh, there's no chance of it coming off. It's not going to come off anyway, but just a safety thing. All right, got my pins cut. Get this out of the way. And let's move everything down here. Get that out of the way. All right, need our anvil. There it is. See there? Couldn't find the third pin. I'm telling y'all, it's Monday. And I just about had it for today, so I'm going in in just a minute. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, got my larger ball peen hammer. Okay, we're going to set the pins in there. Same way I do knife handles, knife pins. Seat them down in there. Let them stick out just a little bit. Now I'm going to take the, the ball and I'm gonna gently tap, because what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna expand this brass on the inside. And it'll expand it on the outside too, make it come out to the wood. If you just put your pins in with epoxy only, the only thing holding that is epoxy. Chances are it's not gonna fail, but if it does, it's gonna fail big. This way, you got a solid connection. Now that's what I have learned over over 10 years of doing this. Turn it over. Now this is another case where you don't want to just pound on it. Just soft blows that brass is soft and it will expand
see that I see how much bigger that has expanded than what it started at that pin will not come out trust me I know I have tried to take pins off that I put in made a mistake for whatever reason cracked the handle or whatever and it is a you know what to get out you gotta bust the whole thing out grind it out or drill it out and we'll do the next one the same way until you want to hit your pin not the wood if you hit the wood you might crack it and at this point you don't want to do that there we go those two are set now I'll do this last one I didn't cut it quite as long as the other ones, but it'll be okay. And I'll put it on the grinder, slick it off. I've already got it smooth around the edges. Then we'll go to the router, knock off the corners, and that'll probably be in the morning. Here we go. Pins are set. Now I hope to get done with this today. But it ain't going to happen. Uh, it is after 4 o'clock. So tomorrow morning we'll come back out. Get at it and get it done. Alright. Let's see if we can see this. Now, I'm going to finish up the cleaver this morning. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer and see. Now, the new handles are on. Yeah, put it on the router, router table this morning. Let's see if we can move in here a little bit. And I have duplicated the original handle there's a uh, chamfered on the edges that's a little bit sharp so I'm going to take the random orbit and we're going to do the final uh, final sanding final shaping on this got to get the Dremel tool out and go in here just a little bit but we'll do that after we do this uh, moving slow this morning it's very cold it was 39 degrees at daylight when I came out here it's warming up so uh it's all good <laughs> all right let's get the sanding on it all righty we're almost there <clears throat> sanded down ready for stain now what I'm gonna do on the spine the rest of it I'm going to do a gray finish on it but on the spine we're going to put some gun blue on there and blacken it now this is mainly for rust protection and give it a little bit of a contrast in color from the rest of the blade mainly for rust protection because when you get a hold of it with your hands you know your your skin body oil sweat anything like that will uh over time
will uh, cause it to rust. Now the handles themselves are sealed with that epoxy that I put on there. So they won't any moisture get in there like it did before. Now the original, they had some kind of um, adhesive on there. And who knows what it was back in the day when they made these. Okay, that's good right there. Uh, at times, they could have even been hide glue. You can make glue out of hides. Cow hides, deer hides, that kind of thing. And that was commonly used back in the old days. And it still works. It worked fine for a long time, it looked like. All right, let that dry for a minute. I'll wipe it with a damp cloth. Touch it back over with the sandpaper. And before I do anything else to the blade, I want to put at least one coat of finish, probably two on the handle. That way, if anything from the blade gets on the handle, it won't soak into the wood. Really pretty knot right there. That's going to be really nice. Those little marks right there, I fill those in. Man, it's going to be pretty. Hang on, just one or two more clips and we'll be ready to go. All right, let's get down to the final on the cleaver. New handle. The finish has dried. Came out very, very, very nice. I like that. All right, I reground the edge. Nice and flat. Now it's not sharpened yet. I'll sharpen it when I get finished with it all the way to avoid cutting myself on it. Now up here where I filed off that the rollover where I've been beat on. I want to try to blend that in just a little bit. Now, if you've seen some of the videos before, you've seen me use this before. Now, this mustard has a very, very high vinegar. Uh, vinegar ingredient to it. And what that's going to do is going to turn that steel gray. Protect it and turn it a gray patina type. Like a forced patina. And it shouldn't match the rest of the blade. Like I said before, I'm not, I don't want to take all this off. It looks too good to take it off. Now, let this sit for probably about 30 minutes or so. Not too long. Now, I'll rinse it off good. And then we'll go over to the buffer. And buff it up with some... Either vegetable oil or olive oil, whichever one I can find laying around the house. <laughs> then I'll make a little sheath for it. I'm gonna make a little leather sheath to cover the blade. Resharpen and we will be done. I've got five other knives, four or five on the bench over there on the other side that I'm working on at the same time. So while this is doing its thing, I'll get over there and work on that. Put that back in the refrigerator so I can have a mustard on my hot dogs. Alrighty, the cleaver project is finished. There we go right there, got a nice little leather sheath on it. Now this way you can still hang it up if you want to. I put it in the drawer, something like that, and uh, don't reach in there and grab it and get cut because it is very, very sharp. Right there it is. Now I did the mustard etch on the the top up here where I filed off all that stuff. It graded up a little bit. It doesn't exactly match the blade. But over a little bit of time. 
Um, it will patina right down and all look the same. Now ground out the um, the chips that was out of the edge and put a new edge on it and this please be careful this thing is very 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 sharp. There you go. Ready to last another hundred years or more. Now my homesteader friends out there uh, if you process your own meat, or if you're planning to do something like that, especially larger animals, uh, you need one of these. You need a good meat cleaver, and that's what it's for. Cut meat, butchering, processing meat, not chopping down trees, beating it with a hammer, all that kind of stuff. But um, I looked at these on eBay and you can get this exact one, probably about the same age, anywhere from $59 up to $200 in a rough state. But you can also look around at flea markets, yard sales, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you can find these. Not necessarily that brand, but anything that's old like that. Uh, I've got one right here. Let me show you this one. Now, this one was uh, gifted to me. One like that, even. It's uh, Maturi Brothers. I have not looked this one up yet and done any research on it. But uh, it appears to be handmade. Very, very, very old. And at some point, I will do restoration on that one. Or another option is I can make you a brand new one, if that's what you want. But if you find one of these, I would guess $60 or less, no matter what kind of shape it's in, it's worth that. And uh, it's worth another $150, $200 to have it rehandled and restored. Because you won't wear it out in your lifetime, your kids won't, and their kids won't. So, uh, there we go. Now this one is going back to its home along with something else. And I'm gonna to try to blend two videos together with a knife that I made that's going to the same place. Or it may be two separate videos. Cause y'all know I get long winded, but that's, you know. I try to explain the whole process all the way through on everything I do. Especially family heirloom projects like this. So, uh, and like I said, I'll send the old handles and the old pins back with it just for a keepsake. So, got to work a little overtime tonight. Got to um, get one more knife blade etched, heat treated, and tempered uh, before I go in. It is uh, 1625, so uh, it's not too late, but uh, it has warmed up this afternoon. The bugs are flying, so... Uh, Anyway, there we go. Meat cleaver done. Thank you all for watching. I thank you for your support. New subscribers. Now, thank you all very much for being here. Thank all my old friends that have been with me for a long time. I appreciate you all a lot. Now, if you got an order, please send it in. I'll be caught up in the next two or three days. I'll be caught up on knife orders. And that looked like the UPS truck. I don't know what he'd be doing coming here. I ain't ordered nothing, but uh, <laughs> anyway, if you need something, give me a holler. I got two more big projects on the books, but other than that, I got plenty of time for orders. So, once again, thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and I will see y'all next time.